What are you actively doing to prevent cancer? You're trying to eat healthy, right? Avoiding toxins in the environment. You don't smoke, you don't drink too much. You avoid getting burnt to a crisp at the beach. Those things aside though, it can feel a bit like we're just rolling the dice and taking our chances not to get cancer. But what if it's possible to know early on before cancer even begins, what our own specific risk factors for different cancers are and how to take preventative action. Dr. Dayan Goodenow has spent decades developing systems of early disease detection. He's conducted clinical trials into ovarian, colon, and pancreatic cancer, identifying the early warning signs of cancer risk so that prevention and treatment can be enacted. The Dr. Goodenow Research Institute continues to research breast, colon, and pancreatic cancer. Welcome to Vital Signs, where we look at how to get healthier from all angles, from the biochemical and nutritional to the things we do that nourish our minds and our souls, I'm Brendan Fallon. You can follow me at Vital Signs Brendan on Instagram and see that's S-E-E Vital Signs on Twitter to get notice of new videos. We now welcome back our expert in the biochemical mechanisms of health and disease, Dr. Dayan Goodenow, for part one of Fixed Cancer's Risk Factors. Dr. Goodenow, very happy to have you back on Vital Signs again and to talk about this area, cancer, that I know you've researched extensively. I know you have some very interesting insights to offer us today. To start with, the obvious question, what is cancer? When I try to explain cancer to people, because they're trying to, because it's scary, right? They think it's some big random event that's coming in there and it's just inserted into their world. And in some ways it is, but it's actually logical and you can understand. The best way I tell the people, because your whole body is a community of cells. And cancer is when one cell in a community stops acting appropriately for that community. Okay, if it's in your breast, it's saying this cell is no longer acting like a breast cell. It's acting as a rogue cell. If it's in your colon, it's no longer acting like a colon cell. It's acting like some sort of rogue cell. And so the best way to think about it is like a neighborhood community, like your neighborhood. You have houses down the street, okay? And you have a house, there could be a drug user in one of your houses, and you would never even know it. They go, they come home, they use drugs, and you never even know. And then eventually they move around to another city and Two years later, you you had a drug user in your neighborhood and you never even knew they were there because people come and go. But then eventually if that drug user doesn't go. They start saying, so eventually that drug use gets bad and they start, they lose their job. So now they no longer have a, a, an income to buy their drugs. So they say, you know what, since I can't buy drugs with my regular job income, why don't I start selling drugs? I can make cash selling drugs. So now the drug user becomes a drug dealer. Okay, and says, you know, when I'm going to start making cash, because I still have groceries to make, I still have things to do. It's like all your cells, your body still need to survive. And so now he starts selling drugs. And all of a sudden now people start coming into the neighborhood to buy drugs from this guy. And at first they just come and go and you don't even know. It's this weird set of lights that come in the middle of the night, but it's still not really disturbing you too much. Right. Then eventually they start having a bunch, bunch of parties and eventually there are four or five cars around this house all day long. And then the evening party becomes a day party. And eventually the house next to the drug house now becomes dysfunctional because the neighbor says, I'm not living here any longer. I'm getting the heck out of here. And so now all of a sudden you have this larger and larger dysfunctional set of people, right? And these drug users are not contributing to the regular community anymore. Okay, they're rogue, right? The regular community is going to school, they're going to work, they're paying the taxes, they're doing all the things that a community does to be healthy. And the same thing happens in your breast or your colon. Okay, all these cells have a job and they work together and they self-support each other. And so cancer is fundamentally that. It's, it's when a cell type, it doesn't matter where it is, whether it's in your brain or your breast, your pancreas, um, it's when a cell in the neighborhood stops acting like it's supposed to. And that's why cancer is very different than another disease. Like when you have heart disease, the cells of your heart Okay, it's not there's not a there's not a drug dealer or a drug house. All the houses in the neighborhood are being affected. Okay, they're all not working properly. Okay, or if I get dementia, okay, it's not some aberrant cell type that's going into my brain and not functioning. The entire the community is no longer functioning. So cancer is very different than a regular disease because a regular disease it's the community of cells that start losing their function. But in cancer, you get a, a new type of cell that comes in and invades your community and it eventually destroys your community and it, if it gets farther enough then you die is it this this original drug user 
the original vandal that, that recruits the, the other cells or it bring, changes well, other cells to, to be... So it's uh, fun, right, but fundamentally it's the peer group around it that allows it to spread, okay? So, because otherwise, if it's inhospitable, okay, like if the person recognizes, you know what, this is just not acceptable behavior in the neighborhood, and everyone knows that's not acceptable behavior, so they don't really feel comfortable being that person. But if you go into another neighborhood, so the, so the question is, if you take a look at all the, the homelessness and the encampment problems we have around the country, right? It's not random, right? You'll have more in Portland or in LA than you'll have in some, you know, more strictly regulated town. Or if you go travel around the world, you're not going to see this in, in Japan, right? So they won't, they're not going to tolerate that. So you have, so these types of environments become conducive to it. What is a bad cell? What does that mean? You're not born with cancer. So a cancer cell isn't, you know, it's not, you're not born with it and it's just waiting for this opportunity to give you lung cancer or breast cancer, right? It ultimately gets forced to become cancerous, kind of like a druggie almost, right? And so he says, you know, if I can't live in this community with a normal job, paying a normal paycheck, with my normal W-4, you know, type slip, well, then I'm going to find an alternative way to survive. I'm going to sell drugs and I'm going to make some cash. This is like a kind of maladaptation to, Correct. to the situation. Right. And it's very, and, it, and actually we know exactly how that happens. And it, the, so when you get back, so back from the analogy to the actual biochemistry of the situation, and the reason why we have cancer rates increasing as we get older is fundamentally at the cellular level, cancer occurs when cells lose their ability to function in the fasting state, okay? And so your body has two, people know, they, they get, you know, you eat your food, right? You get glucose from sugar and carbohydrates and you get fat from triglycerides and oils and so on and so forth. Those are your two main energy sources of the body and your body uses both of them. And during a meal, you're in the, what's called a fed state and that's a, that's a glucose rich state. Our blood glucose levels go up after a meal, insulin comes up and the insulin, you know, helps get our, our sugar weight uh, levels away. That's our fed state. And it's usually a very short period of time. You know, it's a few hours after eating a meal. The bulk of the human time is in the fasting state. And that's when the body uses the energy from your fat cells, from the subcutaneous fat. And so all your fat that's stored all across your body gets released in your fasting state. And now you live on what's called free fatty acids. And that is a secondary source. And as we get older, we stop being able to metabolize as much of the, of the free fatty acids, our fasting state. So our ability to maintain that fasting state decreases. And eventually the cells use more and more sugar. And so when a cell can't actually perform in the fasting state, it is forced, either it's gonna die or it needs to use glucose for energy. And so it starts training itself to use more glucose. And as it trains itself to do that, it eventually becomes cancerous. And that is, that, correlates. is that for all? Is this for all cancers or all cancers? Yeah, and so yeah, so that's what happens. So your susceptibility, all of a sudden, your your network, your, your the peer structure of your cells have become weaker. You, you have you have less ability to contain it. So if some sort of trigger happens in your body, you get inflammation or you get exposed to a, a toxic agent, for example, because there are agents that are they're carcinogenic, right? We we have a lot of those things that can cause cancer, right? Because they'll come in and they'll they'll be stressful in the cell, and they'll they'll force that cell to have another source. And then, but once you've got that trigger in place, then it has an environment to grow.